Hey everybody, it's another No Bullshit Podcast for contractors. And I've got my right-hand man, the head of our coaching department, like literally a rock star, uh, who with him and his team um, just make things happen. And what we are going to talk about today is one of the biggest things that you guys got to realize is that your cash flow and your profits follow your calendar. So stay tuned. If you want to see how to optimize your time, optimize your profits, optimize your cash flow, optimize your business, you want to stick you know, stick with us today because we're going to freaking knock it out of the park. Until right now, this very moment, contractors have always been on their own, not as tradespeople, but being alone and knowing how to take their business to the next level. They call us working class. They call us blue collar. They say that we don't have the smarts to become the business owner that we're meant to be. That is such bullshit. You have the ability. You're more than any of that. The question really is where do you get the insights that you need specific to contracting to systemize your business so you can get your profits to pay for your freedom? I'm Andrew Houston. I'm going to show you how to make more profits, how to get more control, how to get more freedom in the simplest, quickest way possible without any of that bullshit. Welcome to the No Bullshit Podcast for Contractors. Listen up, level up, and if you learn something, like the video, subscribe to the channel, change your business, change your life. So, welcome, Rick. How's it going, brother? Good, Andrew. I'm awesome. How are you? Doing wicked, man. Uh, so, Good. tell us a little bit about what's your role at uh, at the Profit for Contractors camp of contractors. Well, I'm the the head of coaching, which means that uh, I wear the main hat of being the head coach, which means I meet with uh, new members, old members, walk them through the process of time and team, profits and cash flow marketing and sales, work with some of the other amazing coaches that we've got here, and just to make sure that everybody's doing what they need to do to get the profits to pay for their freedom. I love it. So you know what? I'm gonna, we're going to touch on you know, why people need a coach. And by the way, every time I talk about this kind of stuff, maybe you might think it's a plug. Yeah, sure, it might be a bit of a plug for profit for contractors, but look, whether it's us or somebody else, as long as you're raising your hand and getting help going beyond you, uh, that's what it's all about. So we will talk about that before we wrap things up. This is going to be a short little podcast. Um, so let's get right into the topic, okay? So one of the pillars, we got three pillars. Rick just laid them out. I love it, okay, that, you know, we have a system, we have a process. Uh, I talked about time, team, profits, and cash flow, marketing, and sales. At the beginning of this podcast, I mentioned, um, I segued from, you know, saying that your profits – and, and you might want to write this down. Your profits and your cash flow follow your calendar. Okay? So Rick, you know, brought up to me, and he's brought up several times, that one of the biggest challenges that he sees, you know, family members, you know, of, of proper contractors, um, owners come to the table, you know, to him with is, is the challenge of time. Right? So, Rick, you wanted, you know, you, you thought it'd be a good topic for us to, to nail down uh, mm -hmm. this system that we call defaulting your calendar and with this principle mm -hmm. of profits and cash flow, follow your calendar. Tell us a little bit about, like, when people come to you, what, 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 let's not get into so much the solution just yet, but let's just talk about, mm -hmm. like, what are some of the symptoms that you hear that make you go, hey, they, you know, I, you know, once they learn this principle and this system of defaulting their calendar, man, those those bad symptoms are going to go away. What's some of the stuff that you hear? Well, I hear it all the time. And as a former general contractor, licensed plumber, um, I was that guy, you know, sitting on the couch nine o'clock at night working on an estimate. So these are, and because we're not because we're tradesmen, if we think that we don't have a set of pliers or a hammer in our hand, that we're not working, mm. but these are the things that these guys come to us and say is like, I have 24 estimates that I have to get through. I have this going on. I get guys calling me all the time. I don't know where the materials are. Mm -hmm. I'm work. I, I start at, I start my day at five o'clock in the morning because that's when I can get shit done. And these are the things that they, they say is this is time, time, time. If only I had more time to do this, if only I had more time to do this and it's, it's chaos. And, they are in full-blown panic mode because they can't control their time. Mm -hmm. And that that's and I get it. I get the pain that they're feeling. Right. And, uh, you know, you think about some of the, you know, those, those are some of the symptoms, some of the consequences. What are some of the consequences you hear people 
bring to the table, either either on the personal front or business front? Anything that come to mind? Oh yeah, missing birthdays. Mm. You know, missing anniversaries. Right. You know, not knowing when they're going to be home, and it, it's funny. And I know every contractor is going to laugh when I talk about this, but we all have contractor PTSD. And the one question that I still bristle with when I get asked is, what time will you be done? What time will you be home? And there's something about that that immediately makes us clench. You know, the butt cheeks go together and the response is, I don't, your initial response is, I don't know. And unless you're controlling your time, unless you have your day laid out properly and your week laid out properly, you have no freaking idea what your time you're going to be home. Your day could start here and could finish there. No idea. Right. You know, it's interesting. When I go back to when I was systemizing my automation com- company, so it's, it's, by the way, every listening in, you know, for the majority, not everybody, but for the majority of, of people at Prof for Contractors that do coaching, they have either they've owned their own contracting business, they currently own their own contracting business, or they've, they've, they've got experience in that space. So Rick, you know, Harris Plumbing, right? Uh, you know, I, I had Houston Contracting. Um, this this challenge of time is is something that we all struggle with. I, you know, I, even, I mean, outside of the contracting realm, I think everybody struggles with it. I mean, today's gotten super fast-paced, right? You know, it, it's just gotten, there's so much noise out there, you know, social media, you know, all these reminders, you know, uh, the demand of clients has gone up, right? People want, they want an answer right away because society, you know, has taught us that. I mean, you, you know, you think about it, people on, people are, are, are on Facebook and they're messaging each other and there's like, like response, thumb up, thumb down, whatever, but clack, 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 right? It, adrenaline junkie, like clack, 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 instant, 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 right? So we've created a, an, an, a, a, you know, a society of instant, ...ness, right? Like, I need it right now, right? Mm -hmm. So all these different things, you know, on top of even the past of wearing the hat of... I mean, Rick, how many hats were you wearing back in the day? Like... uh, Multiple. mm -hmm. Like what? Give me the Give me the hats. Uh, Install installer, service guide. Yep. um, There's two. Inventory inventory control. Yep. uh, Scheduler, dispatcher. Estimator. Estimator, all Ad, of those admin. ones. Yeah. Admin, yeah. Right. AR, you know, bookkeeper. H- AR, A- HR. Yeah, everything. Right? Everything. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Everything, right? Yeah. So, guys, it's not easy. So, you guys are sitting there going, what the fuck? Okay, great, Andrew. Thanks, Rick. Thanks, boys. Thanks for telling me it's not easy. Okay. Mm-hmm. But, Rick, is there is there a... It's not the absolute. So, anybody listening in, this is not like... If you see me right now, I've got my little eye... What's the fucking eye pen? Right, where the hell is that? What is this mm-hmm. eye pen? Anyways, whatever. Sti- stylus, yeah. Whatever. Stylus, fucking whatever. Yeah. So, anyways, it's like a magic wand, right? There's no magic wand here. So, but with that being said, what we're about to share with you and teach you, you're going to be able to walk away with some steps, simple three to five steps, guys. Not eighteen, not twenty, okay. And if you're part of Prof for Contractors family, guys, this is a great refresher, okay. It's something that. You know, you need to do every single week. It's something that's going to go on for the life of your business. So this principle, this strategy is not a one of. It, it, it is something that's going to have a massive impact to your profits and your cash flow, controlling your time, business-wise, on the personal front, okay? But it's not the end-all, the be-all, but it is a big fucking a big massive impact, okay? So, um, again, uh, if you're part of the Profit for Contractors um family you can go to here so here's what we call default calendar okay you can go to the training on on your default calendar you can get the template um so you guys know how to you know how to do that if you're looking for insights on this any at any part in this conversation and we're going to wrap this up really soon like 15 minutes is is going to be you guys can you guys can get you know insights you can get help don't do it alone and we can help you uh, get your own default uh, diary, you know, calendar, and, and and give you some templates, uh, examples. Okay, but let's get into the the principles, and then let's get them some tips. Sound like plan, Rick? Absolutely. Okay, so Rick, you know, when you're coaching, and in and getting the coaches to to share this default calendar, what do I mean when I say your profits and your cash flow follow your calendar? Like, is that true? 
Well, absolutely. I mean, if, if you're not scheduling time mm -hmm. to do activities, to work on your business, right. to work on high value tasks, you're not getting the profit you're going to you that you need. Perfect. I love it. So here's a little test to see if you should hang up the podcast, end it or continue it. Here you go. If you look back at your last week, if you look back at the last two weeks, if you look back at the last month, either A, B or C, last week, two weeks, last month, and you look back and go, I don't know where my time went, then this is for you. If you look back and go, you know, I spent way too much time fucking sweeping the floors. I spent way too much time dealing with this, dealing with that, dealing with that. This is for you. Who else would this be for, Rick? What else would be, a, a, you know, a, a sort of like a question to go, hey, this is for you. What, would it, what else? Um, if you don't know what time your day starts and if you don't know what time your day ends, this is for you. Be beautiful. So ready, everybody? Here's the fucking reality. Here we go. The reality is I don't care at what stage you're at in your contracting business. And yes, we have something called the Contractor's Ladder of Success. I'm not going to get heavy into it. There's five different levels like, you know, startup, you know, survival, stability, scale, and sell. Okay? There's different levels. That means there's, there's different principles and different learnings. Okay? Like, just like at learning addition, then multiplication, and then trig, and then calculate, blah, blah, blah. Okay? So, but in this case, no matter what level you're at or where you're at, this is going to apply to you, okay? So, when you look at default in your calendar, somebody says, Rick, to you, I, I don't have time to fucking default all my, like, stuff. Like, I, what do you mean? Like, I don't have time for this. That, that's my problem. I don't, I, don't, I don't have time, so how can I default it? What would you say, Rick? Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit. You, and this is the thing, you're busy, busy, busy doing stuff that is, honestly, it's a distraction. It's an avoidance. It's you're dealing with stuff that you shouldn't be dealing with. Hmm. And I get it. And the reason that I talk to guys about defaulting their and girls too about defaulting their calendar is because I need to do it. Personally, I have to default my calendar because if I don't, I'm that guy that can finish up my day and not accomplish anything. I was that guy that would love the checklist. Love me checklists. I'd be checking off stuff all day long. And at the end of the it, love me checklist, I love it. Instead yeah. of the love boat, it's the love me checklist. Yeah, and like, I, I love would me get checklist. Oh, check it, check it, check it, right? And you guys are laughing because I know you do. You know, whether it was in a, a I'm, I'm or the something same. else. Yeah, I still enjoy it, don't you? I do yeah. because it's an accomplishment. But I mean, they're really what you're checking off are really low value th items. Well, they might be, they might not be. I, so I, again, guys, this is no bullshit podcast, okay? So it doesn't mean like I'm just going to say yay and I don't expect Rick to say just yay to everything that I say, okay? That's, that's, mm -hmm. like, that's bullshit, okay? Oh, for sure. So yeah. there could be some high value things on. The problem is that the reality is that your list is never going to end, okay? No. Uh, and, and, and I don't mean that in a negative way. You actually don't want your list to end, okay? Mm -hmm. So long as the list is being filled with the right stuff. Yep. The problem, everybody, with the list... Versus defaulting time, what is it? And by the way, everybody, you're experiencing, you're experiencing what coaching is like, which we're going to wrap up. Okay, so you're you, picture yourself when I was asking these questions, like, is this for you? You know, and Rick's like, is the, this is for you? If this, right? Like, questions are the most powerful thing because if you ask the right questions, you get powerful answers, right? So I'm going to ask a good question. I hope. Why is it? What is the difference between defaulting your calendar? And this list, like, why, do, like, okay, you got this list. I'm checking it off. I got all these things I have to do. So what? Why do I need a default? Because there's, there's no time. There's no, there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no start. There's no, there's no end to it. So the checklist, the checklist is, is just a, it's a carousel. It's a constant evolving it. checklist. Right. Right. So what gets it? So it's constantly evolving. So what's the negative side of it? If you're not defaulting time, what, what happens? You miss stuff. You miss, you miss working on things that you should be working on. That checklist can just be, you're going to add more stuff to it. Each time you check something off, you're going to add something, you're going to, something else is going to get added mm -hmm, to it. Mm -hmm. You need, you need to schedule that time. Beautiful. Okay. So, so let's get into more specifics. Okay. So sure. guys, everybody understands So what we've covered off so far. Again, if you want some more help, you want to, you want to have a chat with Rick. 
or you want to have a chat with one of the team members, one of the coaches, get, you know, to help you out with this, okay? Here's the reality. Here we go. If you look back at your week or two weeks ago or a month ago, I remember I asked that question, right? Okay. How much of that time that you put in was determined by you and protected by you is the question. What do you mean, Andrew? I'm in control. I'm an owner of my business. Yeah? Bullshit. How much of that time? This is the reality. Again, you don't like this fucking reality? You don't think I'm right? Look, who knows? Fucking, I, I'm not saying I'm Mr. Fucking Right. I'm just telling you what's worked for 4,000 contractors. I mean, I don't know. That might be a good indicator. Okay? Is choosing the time and the amount of time gives you the ability to say what, Rick? Yes and what? No. You're freaking right. If you do not do that and you have a list, a lot of times you're being ran by somebody else's list. Who else could be running your list? Rick? Customers. Freaking right. Got a problem. Wine, wine, wine. Class D clients, eh? you guys. Deadbeats. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. The thieves. Never happy. Never satisfied. Mm -hmm. I need you now. What do most people do? They go, right, right? It's, oh, that's mm -hmm. now a priority, right? Yeah. What else happens? Who else, Rick, actually can run their calendar? Uh, their employees. Oh, my God. You and nailed her. And this is the thing. And we're all that guy. Because we're contractors, we all like to wear the superhero cape. So we hand out our cell number. We hand out our email. And, you know, contact me here. Contact me there. And what happens when somebody calls you? What the fuck? It's our own fault. We have to learn to protect that time because if we don't schedule that time, what's going to happen? Somebody's going to schedule it for you. You got it. are going to take that time. You got it. And understand this, everybody. I'm not. I I have this belief. Okay. Yes, there's some there's some bad people out there. Okay. There are definitely some bad people out there. And this whole theory of like, you know, I'm going to make a point to this. This whole theory of like, oh, they'll get theirs. Bullshit. Okay? Unless there's some, like, God or thing of that nature. I'm not going to get all, you know, religious here. But, but let's just deal with, like, right now. Bullshit. What are you talking about, Andrew? Like, somebody does a bad thing, they're not going to be able to sleep at night. No, bullshit. When I was young, I worked at a mental institute. Right? Criminally insane. People kill their whole families. And they sleep fucking perfect. There's all different levels of that. Okay? So what's my point? Regardless if it's the bad people or the good people, okay? My belief is that the majority of people are good. But they have things in their mind that are there, that is in their mind a priority. That is number one on their list. Why? Give me an example of something that's number one on a team's list, Rick, that would not be number one to like react 911 to an owner. Customers not answering the phone. Okay, give me some more. Uh, lack of materials. Fucking right. I'm missing the fucking U joint. I need some fucking Romex. I need some half-inch EMT. I need some L16s. Why, why, what do you mean, Rick? Why, why, why wouldn't the owner have to react to that? Because that's something you should be able to figure out on your own. But if we've got that easy button on our forehead, totally. your guys are going to be hitting that easy button all day long. Okay. Everybody write this down. This is a bit of a side strategy. I might go into a little bit deeper, like on another podcast. But here's the fucking thing. When you default your time, let's get into defaulting. So now I'm going to give you guys, you can use this right away. Like right away. And I want Rick to fucking see if this makes sense. You need to default when you're available for your team. So understand what I'm saying. You might be thinking when you heard this, yeah, but my, that means I'm not supporting my team. No, no, you are not supporting your team by picking up the phone all the time. Just like giving the goddamn soother to a baby. Every time, soother, soother, soother. But the baby stopped crying. Oh, yeah? We'll take the soother away. Now the baby's crying. Oh, oh. Now it's needed. It's like an addiction, right? So, so there's a dependency. You need to schedule. One of the key things you need to schedule is when you're going to support your team. Okay? I'm not going to make it all complicated. We have a whole whack of different meetings. We've got the Monday morning. 
right? We got the five top money making meetings. By the way, if you want that, you want that those agendas, you want that tool, click on the link below, join the contractor tips group. There's some questions to make sure that we're not getting idiots in there and people that are just like not a fit. Okay. Maybe they're not idiots. Maybe they're just not a fit. Okay. But guys, when you default your time and you teach a new culture to your team so that, and I've had to teach this, no offense to Rick and to, because it's part of our prof for contractors culture, which is if somebody's going to call before they call, they have to either a try to solve it or b what Rick? Ask somebody else. Yeah. You, so, use your communication ladder. Yeah. So, so, so try and come up with a solution. You, you're, so mm -hmm. my team is not allowed to come to me and go, I got a problem. Mm -hmm. Right, Rick? They're allowed That's to come right. to the table and go, I've got a problem. Here's what I tried. Or mm -hmm. here's what I'm thinking would solve it. Perfect. Now we're willing to discuss it. But it's not on a reactionary basis. Is it, Rick? Do we have defaulted times when we have like a team huddle? Absolutely. We know when those meetings happen and we know, we know the purpose of them. We know when you're available and when you're not available. Right. And we also, everybody else knows when everybody else is available, right? Yes, sir. Called sharing calendars. Right. Yeah, exactly. So that when somebody, so hey, hey guys, listen, this is how things are going to work. So you guys can do this with your team, like at the end of day today or starting tomorrow morning. Hey guys, want to let you know, I want to be there to support you. So I'm going to default because there's a lot of times, and watch how I position this, and this is the fucking reality, guys. There's a lot of times you guys call me and that I'm not available. So you end up leaving a voice message. You end up sending me all these texts. So instead of doing that, what I want you to do is we're going to schedule a time. I'm going to be available for 30 minutes you know, in the morning, 30 minutes in the afternoon. Again, you guys are going to have to determine what that is. It shouldn't be any more than an hour. Okay, You want to go with 30-minute little increments. Okay, so that you're not taking up too much of your time. Okay, now, so you say to them, as an example, okay, guys, at 10 o'clock, I'm going to be available. So if you want to give me a call, I'll pick up. I'm going to be answering my voice messages. Uh, but the rule is, if you have a problem, say it's material, right, Rick? Yes, They're missing something. I want you to either try and solve it yourself by trying something. Or if it's too risky and you're not, you don't want to try it, right? Like say on, a, on being an electrician, right? On the electrical side, uh, I don't know if this fucking transformer is good. Maybe I'll just fucking pull the fucking, you know, turn the power on. Uh, no. Okay. Or <laughs> wrong size or whatever. I'm just saying, right? Or they have to come to the table with a solution. Rick, what happens when somebody falls that culture come 10 o'clock? Do a lot of problems get solved or do they not get solved? Oh yeah, absolutely. They get solved. Why? If you're for, because there's the, 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 there's no easy button. You got to figure it out. Right. So guess what, guys? If somebody is trying to get something solved, and they got, it's between it's at eight o'clock, and they know you're going to be available at ten, and they know that when you get on the phone with them, you're going to have to either say, "Here, I tried this," or "Here's my suggestion." They're automatically having to think about that solution before ten o'clock. What do you think happens? They solve it. Mm -hmm. They phone the supplier. They fucking at, get input. They, oh my God, then guess what? Come 10 o'clock, there's no message. How, what percentage of clients, Rick, when they apply, when they default, just that one thing, what percentage of their text messages go down from the team? Help me, help me, help me, help me. They're almost they're almost gone because they they know there's no way there's no easy button there's no way to you got to figure it out and these these are the things that happen when they know their expectations your team knows the rules of the game yes well said dude okay mm -hmm. very good okay so guys we just talked about one default at time that's mm -hmm. it and we're gonna wrap this baby up it's twenty three minutes we're gonna wrap this baby up in like six minutes here cool Rick yes sir okay so. Think about it this way, guys. You've got these hats, right? And and Rick, let's let's deal with again. I'm trying. We're trying to deal with objections. Okay, just to let you know, I'm using secret psychology on you guys. You might be like, what? I'm like, yeah. I'm trying to get you your brains to go. That fucking makes sense to the to the point where it's like, I'd be an absolute fucking idiot not to apply this. <laughs> right? <laughs> True. So in that last example, ask yourself this: How could that not help? Hmm.
That's a good question. How could not defaulting time so, you know, to reduce fucking text, reduce voice messages, and by the way, you're actually increasing support. Why are you increasing support to your team? Yeah, how, how the fuck is that, Andrew? I'll tell you why. Because you're present. What do you mean? What do I mean by that, Rick? That you're present for the team at, t- at say, it's 10 o'clock. What's that mean? You're, you're focused. Yes. You're focused. When you're having that conversation with whoever it is, the only thing that matters is that conversation you're having that person right then and there. Perfect. Guys, do you get it? Imagine how many calls you get from your guys and you're on the phone with somebody, you got, you, you know, somebody else is on hold, you're, you're, you know, and then somebody else is interrupting you. I mean, honestly, I'm going to tell you guys, you, for the majority of contractors I talk to, the intelligence level is super, super high. Okay, you fucking are able to keep crazy numbers in your head. You're able to manage all this shit out of your head. But guess what? That's the problem. It's in your head, right? That's the problem. So get this gets it out of your head. This gets it defaulted. It sets the rules of the game. It gets people to think for solutions. I mean, guys, like this is just one fucking meeting. Now we're going to get into a couple others. Okay. So how do you go out? Okay, okay, Andrew. Okay, and should that be daily? Yes. Dear, does your team need support daily? Yes. Mm-hmm. Now you might say. Yeah, but I got project managers. Well, guess what? This fucking thing needs to be handed down to project managers. And you need, so you need a default. If you got a hierarchy of like, you know, you, project manager, foreman, fucking tradesperson, apprentice, right? Hierarchy of communication. You guys see me drawing my fucking little pyramid here, okay? Is you want to make sure that, that those, that, that the availability, okay, follows the hierarchy of the person above them. So that, that they're having the ability to get the help that they need at certain intervals and times. Right, Rick? Yes, sir. Okay. So last little couple of things. What else, do, what else do we default? Well, guys, Rick was nailing it in the beginning. And you're like, what? Rick, let's talk about people having issues with cash flow. What would be a couple of things that needs to be defaulted in calendar, whether it's the owner or somebody else? Uh, billing, collecting. You hear this, guys? Default in your billing, default in your collecting, default in your accounts payable. What do you mean? You guys ready for this? When I first started out, I learned this concept. I think this was from Brian Tracy, something like that. Uh, or was it seven? Uh, uh, Stephen Covey, probably Steve Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Fuck, that was a fucking great book. That's, it's in there. Uh, Stephen Covey, guys, great book, Seven Habits, mm-hmm. right, Rick? Uh, I'm, uh, it's my Bible. Right, beautiful. Okay, so guys, let's look at accounts payable. You're like, what do you mean accounts payable and default in time? Yeah, so people used to call me after I applied that. Thank you, Stephen Covey. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I read this little thing on him. He's like, yeah, but somebody called me up one day, and I applied exactly this story. So somebody called him up and said, hey, I, uh, I, I'm looking for an accounts payable. He says, call back on Thursday. They're in at Thursday at 9 o'clock. Oh, okay. Okay, call back Thursday at 9 o'clock. Who picked up the phone? Rick? Should be the same person? Yes, guess what? It was the same fucking person. It was Stephen Covey. He picks up the phone. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, this account's payable. Guy goes, hey, man. (laughs) I talked to you earlier in the week. He goes, yeah, well, the account's payable department's in at 9 o'clock. That's me. Yeah. The guy's like, what the fuck? He's like, well, yeah, so I can focus on accounts payable. How can I help you? I'm ready to help you because this, uh, like, what, what do you, what is it that you're inquiring about? What's the invoice? What's this? So he's focused. He's got his shit ready. Guess what? I started doing that, guys. Defaulting your time, the invoice. Oh, I don't have time. I'll get to it. What happens with, with, with I'll get to it regarding invoicing? Rick. Never ha- Never happens. Never happens. And when it does happen, Rick, and it's two, three weeks later, Rick, do things get missed on it? You guarantee it, and you've given your co- your your clients a chance to dispute the bill. Fuck, guys, do you hear this? By the way, mm. Rick, when you invoice somebody and it says payment due thirty days, when is it? When does the thirty days start? As soon as the invoice goes out. Right. So, guys, if you wait a week, two weeks, three weeks, guess, guess what? You're fucked. If you wait a month, watch it. You wait a month. And then you invoice, you instantly just took your accounts receivable to 60 fucking days. You're no longer a contractor. You're a bank. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, 
you don't, you're not in the business of fucking lending out money, are you? Hey, Rick? Right? Okay. No. So, guys, what other advice would you give, uh, Rick, regarding defaulting time? Like, or or insights? You know, like, how does this translate down to the team or or structure or what? Well, I I always look at it from a personal experience. Um, Like, my day starts. I have, I get up at 5.30 so I can dick around for half an hour. But my day starts at 6 a.m. I have seven things that I need to do personally in an hour before my before my date, my actual day starts. So they are broken down to every every 10 minutes. And that time, you know when it happens? Monday to Friday. And then my day starts. And it's it's blocked in there. And it may change. There may be certain things that kind of get dropped in there. Yeah. But I focus on the fundamentals. I focus on the things that that will will keep me grounded, that will keep me focused. Beautiful. So so start with one or two things. It doesn't have to be your entire day. It doesn't have to be your entire week. But focus on one or two things. Start with the easy stuff. Beautiful. I love it. Okay. Mm-hmm. So guys, get ready. This is your fucking action plan. Okay, I'm gonna crank this baby out in two minutes. This this is mm-hmm. this is what it's about. Here we go. First thing I want you to do. Okay. Forget about the past weeks. Done. It's in the past. Okay? Right? I want you to write down where are you having the biggest challenges. So see you're having cash flow issues. Okay? Go and write down cash flow. Say you're like, bad communication. Write down bad communication. Not getting enough clients. Write down not getting enough clients. Where the fuck that is? Okay? That's what you're going to do. Okay? In our realm of profit contractors, we have these in pillars. Time and team, profits and cash flow, marketing and sales. And it's all systematic and templates and all this stuff, which is awesome. But for you guys listening in, let's just do it. So I got like a minute and a half left. So here we go. You write that down. Then you say to yourself, what are the hats that are directly related to that? So what are the hats, right? So if it's cash flow, let's just focus on cash flow. Typically, it's going to be accounts receivable. It's going to be invoicing. Now there's the whole aspect of like, am I quoting jobs profitably, all that kind of stuff. That would be that would be on the profit side of things, okay? Like I don't know if I'm, I'm profitable in jobs. Okay, then you write that down. Then you assign the hat. What's the hat or hats that go with that? So on the cash flow example, it's accounts receivable and invoicing. Perfect. We now need to default a time allocated to that. Now you're going to have to take a gauge on it. If you're way the fuck behind in your invoicing, then a half an hour is not going to cut it. So there's going to be a cycle where you're going to have to peak up, put in extra time, get caught up, and then guess what? Then you stay caught up. Then you stay on, on top of it, Okay. Now, you want it to be the same time and the same day or days. You might want to spread this out if you're like, holy fuck, I got like tons of invoicing to do. Then it's like, okay, man, I'm going to break this down instead of it being like a full day or four hours. Okay, one hour a day. Fuck, I can do that. Okay, right, Rick? Break it down in small mm-hmm. chunks. That's it, default. Yep. Okay. Now, what you, do you do? Okay, now you look at that. That, sec- that thing, it says invoicing, and all you're going to do in your calendar with technology, guys, it's so simple, okay? Fucking Google, the Apple calendar, whatever. You're going to put in there, okay, who do I need to invoice? Holy fuck, Andrew. I, I've got like 20 people to invoice. Perfect. Don't worry about the 20. How many people in that one-hour slot, because remember we said four one-hour slots, could, do I think that I could accomplish? Oh, fuck, I could invoice five people. Holy shit. By the end of the week, five times four is 20. I'm fucking caught up on my invoicing. Yeah, but guess what? You got to invoice every week. Perfect. Now you can reduce that time so that every week you're consistent. Guys, it's this simple. Last little tip. That time that becomes repetitive on a hat that is critical and reoccurring is what's called a non-movable time. What's a non-movable time, Rick? It's something that's protected. That's that's there. That's not going anywhere. That's right. Okay. The only fucking reason that that ever get you would ever not do that is it, something personal. Somebody or somebody gets hurt or something like like some nine 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 one one. The fucking building's on fire. Okay. It's mm-hmm. non movable. You have to tell yourself it's non movable. Okay. So, it, okay. There's movable items. Okay. That we'll get into that maybe later on. But let's just focus on the non movable. Is invoicing non movable, Rick? Yes, sir. Fucking right. Is collecting your money off the street accounts receivable, non-movable? Yes, sir. Is doing quotes non-movable? Like you got a fucking quote, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Project management of jobs? Yes, sir. Totally. Okay, guys. So allocate these slots in time. Okay? They have to get done. 
Okay. It's also going to give you a very good indicator of your capacity and your bandwidth. True, Rick? Yeah, absolutely. How does it help you with that? Well, you see how many hours you have in the day. You see the things that you can and you can't do. And mm. you can look at your calendar and say, I don't have time to do that in my day. Totally. Okay. Now, here's the fucking icing on the cake. Last little pieces of ice. Here we go. So that's your strategy, guys. Really simple. Then you put it in your calendar. Then you fucking do it. Okay. You don't need to know exactly, you know, week on week on week on week, who's going to go in the, who's going to go in that slot of invoicing. That's going to be specific to who needs to be invoiced. Right. And if you don't get all the invoicing done on the Monday, it's okay, man. Guess what? Your, your stress level is going to go down fucking big time. Why? Because you know the next day you got an hour allocated that's non movable to do invoicing again. Right, Rick? Yep. Okay. Have, has there been any other, like, any other input as far as like, how it de stresses? Like, some people might go, oh. fucking doing this is going to stress me out. What would you say to them? Well, absolutely. I have, I have clients all the time. Phone them up. What's going on? And they're speaking a million miles an hour. It's like, I don't have time for this. I don't so I go, hold on. Have you defaulted calendar? And so what do you mean? Have you booked in time to do this? Do you do this? And then within a few minutes, you can actually hear their voice lower. The pace of speech gets a little bit slower. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, okay, I figured it out. And, and it's, it's just the stress level. How, how, how amazing would it be? to say to your wife, your partner, whoever you go home to and say, mm. I'll be, I'll be home at six o'clock instead of saying, I don't know what time I'm going to be home. The stress of planning your day goes away. It's being organized. We're all tradesmen. The stress of planning. I love rhymes, right? The stress of planning yeah. your day goes away. Absolutely. Beauty dude. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to use one last little thing. Rick, is it important to default your personal life? Like, say, your weekend, your evenings? Mm -hmm. Why? Why? Mm -hmm. How is this directly related to your calendar feed, your, your, your life? You have a life outside of work. You have people to go home to. You have parents, friends, family, children, whoever it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you don't default that, what happens, Rick? Shit gets in the way. Shit happens. Before you know it, it's been a month before you spent time with your kids. Yeah, did you, you experience that ever? Oh, yeah. You make promises to your kids and you can't keep them. Totally, dude. Totally. Okay. So uh, any last words of wisdom, Rick, to people regarding this default calendar? Where can they get don't, help or, or what would you say? Uh, don't expect it to be perfect. Just get it done. Just start defaulting something. Yeah. If you can't do if you can't do your whole week, at least pick freaking something. Pick one thing. Guys. It, pick one thing. One thing. One thing. Yeah, one thing. No, okay, good. and I th I would highly advise that the one thing is going to be directly related to where you're having a problem. Okay, mm -hmm. so if it's cash flow, it should be one thing related to that. Not just fucking pick anything. Pick one yeah. thing that's going to have an impact on the things you need impact on. Then it's intentional. Okay, mm -hmm. and and Rick, what about them? Give how how any strategies on empowering them? Now they've defaulted it, right? You guys are listening in still. So hopefully that means you're going to take action right after this call or during this fucking call you're listening to. Pause it, do whatever, okay? Or click the link below to get some more personal help on it. But what would you say to them to protect that? To be able to say more intentionally or have the power to say no to things? Because no is actually the biggest one. We say yes to too much. So what about the no? How to, how to help them with saying no? How to help them say no? Here's the thing. Uh, years ago, I learned to say no. My task for two weeks was to say no to everything and the reason saying no is so powerful is when somebody says would you like to go to the movies and they you say yes does do you have to explain why you're saying yes you don't but when you say no you have to explain why you're saying no you shouldn't have to explain why you're saying no so you learn learning to say no is the most powerful thing you can ever do and you'll get tested multiple times your whole life yourself. actually yeah, all the time, all the time. Because your life, your life changes, adjusting. right? Like, oh yeah. You need to. You saying no puts you in control. You need to be in control of your life. You need to be in control of your business. You need to be in control of your calendar. Guys, I, I I'm going to share something personal. Uh, not me, but uh, somebody I know. If you're and this, if this person's listening in, I'm not seeing your names. So no worries. I was on a hunting trip with my son. And we were in this blind with this guy. Okay, my son and I are new to hunting. And whether or not we shoot anything doesn't matter. I'm out there with my son. It's fucking. It's it's awesome. And 
we start talking about time and stuff like that, it just comes up, right? Because maybe I'm a, I'm a coach all the time. Okay, just I think you are too, Rick. Right? Just don't oh yeah, let, yeah. Don't I, let got, her spouse I got told. I got told that the other day. Stop trying to coach me. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, is and the guy and we start talking about time. The guy got emotional. I go, "What's going on?" He goes, "I missed the birth of my kid, mm. like last month." I said, "Yeah." I said, uh, "That's got to be tough." He's like, "It's such bullshit." He says, "I was like, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there." And next thing you know, and he's in the trades. Next thing you know, he's like, I said yes to this and this. And then I got so carried away in solving somebody else's problem that I missed the birth of my kid. So when my wife called me, I didn't put in the you know, consideration that I was in an area, which I should have, like, I, I thought about, but I forgot about, right? Thought about, forgot about. That I was in this area where there was bad signal. Went to a freaking client's place. In, you know, helping him with his HVAC, you know, we don't have fucking heat and blah, blah, blah. And I missed the birth of my kid. And he's emotional. And mm-hmm. like, what do I say to the guy? Right? And he says, I don't know, Andrew, what do you have to say? I said, well, I guess there's two ways of looking at it. He's like, what's that? Either you learn from the fucking lesson or you repeat it. Mm-hmm. And he got even more emotional. And I was like, oh, fuck, I don't know if this guy's going to snap on me. My son's there. I'm like, mm, you know, my, my son's like, you know, I'm like, I don't know where this is going to go. And he's like, you're fucking right. I said, yeah, so what are you going to do about it? He goes, I'm going to default every day spending time with my kid from this day forward. There you go, brother. There you go. Yeah, what happens if somebody calls you now? He's fuck that. I'm not fucking going. Mm-hmm. They can wait till tomorrow. Bingo. Right? Mm-hmm. So either you learn from this today, guys, or you don't. That's it. Okay? End of story. And on the coaching front, you've been coached. This is what it's about. Get help from people that know how to help you. They can give you simple steps. We laid out a simple plan. Guys, it's super, super simple. Start with one thing like Rick said. Right? Fucking don't overcomplicate it. So, and, and stick to it. That's it. So, Rick, thanks, brother. You're freaking amazing, uh, you know, with the team and helping all the family members. You're, uh, you're a great asset and, you know, you're teaching great lessons and we're going to keep having you back here to share some of your insights. And I think, uh, I think that's it. So thanks, man. It's awesome. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, hey. Bob. Learn from the best. Hey, thanks, man. All right, guys. Okay. Uh, hey, and I learned as well, guys. Look, I, I'm not, I want to be clear here. I don't fucking know it all, right? I think it's Stephen Covey, Seven Habits. I'm pretty fucking sure it's like page 147 or something where he breaks down the agenda, something like that, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's freaking awesome. Okay. So, Hey, I learn from the best too. And I'm sure they learn from the fucking best. Okay. Yeah. What's the common denominator? We're learning from other people. I didn't come up with all of it. Right. So guys, we'll see you on the flip side. Get coach, get help. Click the link below. If you want some more insights, you want to get into this contractor tips group where some of these templates and tools and agendas are for the Monday morning meeting, Friday reflection, blah, blah, blah. And we'll see you guys later on. That's it. Catch you.